Zoom has risen above all the others. It's pretty much become the default video conferencing app in the past year or so. And so I wanted to make a video about really uh, the story of Zoom all the way back to the very beginning of electronic communication. I thought a good starting point would be 1844 when the very first message was sent over telegraph. What hath God wrought? Sent by Samuel Morris, the guy who invented the telegraph. And this was a pivotal moment in the history of man because it represented a speeding up of sharing of information. So before this, to share information, you know, you had to wait a lot longer, whether it was sending a letter across the Atlantic or having a guy hop on a horse with, I don't know, a picture you drew or something. Uh, it would take a while for these things to move. So with electricity you could send messages a lot quicker. Uh, this idea obviously grows and grows from 1844, and really it was 1927 that a real milestone was reached where the first video call was made by AT&T's Bell Labs. It was a connection between Washington, D.C. and New York City. It was a two-way audio connection and a one-way video connection. So this is really the, the very early start of video conferencing. A decade later, the term video is coined, and it's really in the 1960s that the digital age really begins. You have, obviously, computers. Uh, the Internet is starting to form around this time, and you have the first transcontinental video call at the World's Fair in New York City, and this was done in 1964 using AT&T's picture phone. Uh, a few years later, you actually have the term video conferencing used by the guy who helped create the mouse, Doug Engelbart. Three years later, as far as the history of Zoom is concerned, you have a major year because the future CEO and founder of the company itself was born, Eric Ewan. He's growing up. And at the same time, in 1982, you have a video link made between the U.S. and Japan. Apparently, it was for business purposes. And around this time, you have Ewan, who is dreaming, at least according to popular Zoom lore. He is in a long-distance relationship with his girlfriend, who lives a few hours away. And he's dreaming of a way to communicate with her that's really easy and really quick and where you can have a, a video call in your hand. So he's dreaming about this. In 1989, the World Wide Web is created. And in 91, you have the very first webcam created. It was very low resolution, and I guess it was to check on coffee pot levels, which is kind of a random start to this whole digital world we all live in now. And there's other inventions coming out in the next couple of years. AT&T has a video phone. Panasonic makes the first cordless video phone. Uh, Microsoft launches a video conferencing client called NetMeeting. And a year later, in 1997, Ewan is hired by WebEx. So this company was founded a couple of years prior and Ewan was one of the first initial hires. He was, I think he was one of the first 30 hires. And he really helped make WebEx successful as an online meetings product. Uh, by the time he was done, he had something like 30 patents. He's actively, in a way, making his dream from the 80s come true. Uh, but besides this, there's other things happening in the video conferencing world. Like in 2000, you have the first MPEG-4 streaming phone. And in 2001, you have the first telesurgery and also the first live broadcast from a war zone where CNN does a live broadcast and it was the first major worldwide instantaneous video communication. So this is the time after 9-11 where, in a sense, the world was in turmoil. You had the, the these attacks kind of uh, put a wrench in the whole system not unlike the COVID-19 pandemic, where in 2002 you had less international travel 
and WebEx rises in importance. And of course, Ewan is at WebEx, so he's getting a feel for how to make software useful for people um, in times of need, I guess. And yeah, WebEx fulfills that role in a sense. Of course, it wasn't the only piece of software in this realm. You have a bunch of different video conferencing apps coming out in the next couple of years like Skype and GoToMeeting. And it was around this time that Cisco acquires WebEx. So Ewan is still at WebEx and now he's at Cisco. He becomes the VP of Engineers. And he didn't particularly fit in at Cisco. Apparently it was very business focused and he wanted it to be more customer focused. So the seed is planted for his escape. And eventually in 2011, he cuts the cord, he leaves Cisco, and along with 40 engineers, he founds Zoom Incorporated. Nope, just kidding. It was actually Saspi Incorporated. And it's no wonder they eventually changed the name to Zoom. But uh, regardless, the, the market was saturated at the time, and it was actually hard to originally get investors because people just didn't believe that another video conferencing platform was needed. The next year, the name of the company was officially changed to Zoom after a 2012 children's book named Zoom City. And the beta is launched for Zoom. One of the earliest official customers of Zoom was Stanford University. So in a way, it put Zoom on the map. And on the map, it went because the next year, Zoom version 1.0 launches grew very rapidly. It went from something like 400,000 users to millions in just a few months. But it wasn't until 2017 where they reached a major milestone of becoming a unicorn company. And what that means is it's valued over $1 billion. During this year, it also added telehealth to Zoom for doctors to do remote consultations with patients. Zoom keeps growing and growing and adding features. Like in 2019, it adds an official cloud telephone service. So it's really becoming a very useful business tool. And it goes public where it becomes the market leader. And we all know what happened the next year in 2020, where the COVID-19 pandemic created a quote-unquote remote work boom. And Zoom, in a sense, became king. Now, the question is, was Zoom just such a good product that it was destined to become the 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 one major video conferencing tool? Or was it just in the right place at the right time and had a little bit of luck? I think that it's a little bit of both, but obviously we're still a little bit too close to it to see why exactly Zoom ended up on top. But um, being on top doesn't mean it, it doesn't have its pitfalls. In 2020, Zoom had its fair share of controversies ranging from security to privacy to censorship. So uh, you do have to give Zoom credit. They did respond in a lot of ways to these various concerns. Of course, having congressional hearings will help make that happen. In 2021, it adds a bunch of new features. It acquires an AI-based translation company. And it tries to acquire Five9, which is a contact center company, but that fell through. And that's about where we're at, at least at the recording of this video. The future of Zoom is unknown, just like anything else. In my opinion, I think Zoom is just going to continue on the arc that it's on and growing and growing and eventually become a big tech company, just like Facebook or Google. But who knows what's really going to happen. It could fall just as quickly as its rise. So who knows? Anyway, I, I hope you enjoyed this video. I tried to make it brief and not too long. I didn't want to bore you. But either way, I hope that you have a nice day and hope you come back next time. Have a good one.